Hi guys, today we're unboxing and setting up an Xbox Series S. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So you may have seen on the channel, I've also unboxed the Xbox Series X. I'll include a card in the corner there, so click that if you want to check that unboxing out as well. So the main difference between the two devices is the fact the Series S doesn't support 4K gaming. It only supports 1440p and it can manage 120 frames per second as well. The Series S also doesn't have a disk drive, has less internal memory, but it can play all the next gen games. In terms of size, the Series S is 60% smaller in size. So let's have a brief look around the packaging. Comes nicely packaged, image of the controller and the console there. 120 frames per second, no disk support, 512 gigabyte SSD, Coming around the top, all digital, and another picture of the console and controller. Coming around this side, same thing highlighted again, frames per second, storage, Xbox velocity architecture, high dynamic range, the so HDR, variable refresh rate, and disc-free gaming. Gives content on there. Coming around the back, power your dreams, and the same things highlighted again. Coming around this side, lots of detail given, and it's all in multi-language and just some more general info underneath. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so opening this up for the first time, this is what you're presented with. Power your dreams, there's a box over here. And if we open that, you've got a HDMI cable in there, got a power cable, product and regulatory guide. Then you've got the controller, and two batteries, Duracell OEM batteries. So like I said on the Xbox Series X, it's unbelievable that they're still doing batteries with this. They should just give rechargeable batteries or some sort of power pack to just keep this charged up. No point getting these batteries and just throwing them away after a few weeks. Now looking at the controller, very similar to the Xbox One X controller, the only difference being is this sharing button here. Other than that, all the buttons are in the same location and it looks identical. In terms of build, feels good, nice and comfortable. Got some ridges over here, either side. That gives a little bit more grip. Two triggers, either side here. Got a pairing button and a charge point, which is type C. And opening this cover is a point where you put your batteries in it. Next, we've got the Xbox, so taking this out. and very compact in size. And as well as that, you get a getting started guide with this. Just details how to get set up and up and running with this. Now looking at the Xbox Series S, you can see nice and compact in size. If I come in close there, you can see Xbox imprinted in there. Got a vent over here, all black as you can see. Matte finish on here all the way around. And coming to the front, you got a USB point here. Got a pairing button to pair up with your remote. And then looking over here, you've got the on button. Coming around the side, more vents here. Now looking over here, you've got an ethernet port there. You've got two USB ports. Then you've got a HDMI out. Then you've got storage expansion port and a power port there. And over here looks like a Kensington locking point. Coming over this side, you've got some more vents and you've got four rubber pads, one in each corner. And now coming over to the bottom, same again, four rubber pads again. And on the side, you've got some vents. Got a line coming across and some writing either side. So if I come in close, you can see Xbox. And then hello from Seattle. Build wise, nice and compact, which is what I like about it. Whereas a Series X is quite chunky. It takes up a lot of space. Let's make a start at getting this console up and running. So I'm at my console gaming area here. I've got my Xbox Series X over here. Then we've got the PS4, Xbox One X, PS3, and then the Xbox Series S is just gonna be set up over here just for ease of setup. Now, in terms of connecting it up, I'm just gonna plug in an ethernet cable, obviously the HDMI and the power into this. So power goes into this point, HDMI gets connected here, and the ethernet connection goes here. And that's it, you're ready to go. Next to place the batteries in the controller. So these are the batteries it comes with. So I already mentioned they're Duracell OEM batteries and one goes this way, the other one goes this way. Put the cover on now and there you go, controller's ready. 
So let's get started with this. So it's just a matter of holding down the controller here. There you go, you can hear it turning on. So let's give it a moment now. That's what you're initially presented with. So now we're presented with a dialogue which is asking us to configure the Xbox using the Xbox app. So now this is a bit different from how it used to be before, before you could configure it directly off the unit itself. This is a method of speeding up the whole setup process. So you either need a tablet or a mobile phone. So it works on both Android and Apple devices as well. So coming over to my Android device, if I click on the Play Store, that's the app we're after, Xbox. If I click Open, this is what you're initially presented with. So if I click Setup Console and I need to enter in the code that's displayed on the screen, then we'll click Connect to Console. It's connected to the console, let's click Next. Confirm your language and location, that's fine. So next to that. So the console needs an update, let's click Next and let it update and we can choose the power mode. So we're gonna go for energy saving and next to that. Sign in and security preferences. I'll click no barriers only because I'll be the only one using this and next to that. Do you want to be automatically signed in when you turn on your Xbox? And I'll click enable instant sign in. Automatic updates, that's fine for that to be on. Next to that. Turn on remote features, I'll click skip for that. Now let's get you signed in with an Xbox profile next to that. And let me confirm my details off camera. There you go, welcome back. And let's click, let's go. How we use your data, details on that next to that. Help make your Xbox experience better. And this is where diagnostic details and usage data are sent to Xbox. So I'll say no thanks to that. When we share data with publishers next to that. And I'll turn off the keep in touch info ones, the so next and all done now. So we'll click on the X and let's give it a moment to update. System update complete, your console is done updating. And there you go, welcome. And it's saying to press and hold the Xbox logo on the controller. I'll do that now. Next we have to press the A and there you go. Now it needs to update the controller. So we'll let it do that. There you go, controller's updated next to that. Okay, so it's found some settings from my last Xbox, including settings, preferences, ease of use. I'll say no to that. Offer for the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. No thanks to that. And find the best settings for your TV. So I'll continue on that. Let's give it a moment. Okay, keep display at 4K. Let's go, you're all done setting up your Xbox. Time to play. So now there's an option to take me home. And there you go, simple as that to get up and running. Now that the console's set up, a couple of things I wanted to show. First of all, the storage on the device. So the packaging says 512 gig SSD. And now if I come into the system menu and look in storage, so it's saying internal storage. I've got some installs going on in the background at the moment, but it's saying out of the amount that's free, you only have 364 gig available on here. So that's considerably less than what they're showing on the packaging. So it gives the impression in one way that you're gonna get 512 gig. So that's gonna fill up pretty quickly once you start getting all your games on there. So I'll aim in the future to do a video on how to expand the storage on this because that definitely isn't gonna be enough once you start installing a load of games. Now coming back from here, and going to general, then you've got TV and display options. Now going into here, this is where it's interesting to see. So obviously my TV here is a 4K OLED. It's the C9 edition and it's a 55 inch TV. Now looking at display resolution, you can see the resolutions available. 720p, 1080p and 1440p and 4K Ultra HD. Now 4K Ultra HD is available. And you can see here, refresh rate, I can actually take that up to 120 hertz as well. Let's give it a moment. And there you go, keep that refresh rate. So now coming across, going to 4K TV details, this is where it's interesting. So it's saying the TV supports 4K at 60 hertz, 4K at 120 hertz, but playing games, your TV supports up to a native 1440p at 120 frames per second. So the support seems to be there obviously for 4K, but gaming wise, it takes it down to the lower resolution. So this is where it differs from the Xbox Series X. So the Series X can support 4K Ultra HD at 120 frames per second. 
So I thought it's worth showing that. It's just interesting seeing it. I didn't think you'd be able to select that resolution. I guess that resolution is available for general usage on the device. Now, another thing worth showing, I think, is the game side of things. So I've got some games which are on CD and I've got some digital games. So I've entered my account in, obviously, on this device and it's picked up all my games, but only up to a certain point. It's only picked up all the digital editions I've got. And anything where I've got a CD involved, it doesn't appear in the list. So my account does have other games on here. So for example, Red Dead Redemption, it's also got Watchdog Legion on there as well, but they're not appearing. So they've actually blocked this out completely. So there's no way around this. So it is distinguishing between the digital and the physical releases. It's a bit of a shame really. Obviously, if my account has it associated with it, then it would have been nice if I could have played it, but then I guess that defeats the purpose then, right? They want to hold you back so you buy the full version, which is the Xbox Series X with the CD player on there. Now to highlight the limitation in storage on here. So you can see for yourself in the corner, all storage and there's 16.5 gig free, 95.5% is full now, and going into all owned games, you can see there, I've only managed to put on six games on here. Now, it would be a matter of playing the games and once you've done, obviously uninstalling it and continuing, but this sort of shows the limitation you're gonna get. Other than that, the interface itself is identical to the one you get on the Xbox One X and even on the Xbox Series X. So no real difference in terms of usage and navigating around here. So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed the unboxing and setup of the Xbox Series S. You've seen for yourself, very simple to set up and configure, and a few limiting factors on here. Obviously, the beefier one is the Xbox Series X on this. So if you're looking and you've got the money to spend that, I'd suggest go for that. Obviously, you're not limited then. I think it's nice having the option of being able to buy the games at a discounted rate from store so you can play them and obviously sell them off afterwards. If you do buy this unit, you're gonna be limited with that. You're gonna to have to buy at whatever digital price they're selling it on, on the Microsoft store. Other than that, a good console to buy, I'd say, if you've got a limited budget. And next I'm gonna move on to the gameplay side of things and hang around for the end cards. I'll have a playlist showing more Xbox related videos. Drop me a like if you've liked this video. Let me know what you thought of the Xbox Series S. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.